Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of October 28th through November 3rd. I hope that this video finds you in good space and finds you well. For me personally, I am a bit under the weather as uh, my daughter is on her second cold of the school year and it's the second month into the school year. So I'm like, ah. and I was fortunate enough not to catch the first cold and here we are with the second one and it got me. So please bear with me while I share here what I am sensing and feeling and reading into for the energy of this week. And before I get into the cosmic climate, I do just want to share one announcement. This Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, Alexis and I will be going live to discuss nightmares to debunk myths around and, and stigmas around nightmares and really discuss how they can be incredibly healing. And this is gonna, this discussion is going to be <clears throat> on our podcast YouTube channel, Journey Through the Interverse. And so we would love to have you live. And we would love to hear your thoughts, your perspectives, and share any questions that you might have for us on this topic. And so if you're curious and interested to join, you can join via the link in the description of this video. And we already have a few episodes on our YouTube channel if you want to see what we've been chatting about. And in addition to that, there is a, a playlist on my channel called Dream Chats in which there have been many live dream chats between Alexis and I before we officially started the podcast. And that goes all the way back to, I think, February and even into the chats I did by myself um, regarding dreams all the way back to like the end of uh, 2023. So there's a lot there for you if you are really curious about dreams and want to learn more about that. So that's my only announcement for this week. I have been talking a lot about balancing forces. And yes, we're in Scorpio season, my fave. And we are also still within the Libra lunar cycle. And this is going to be the last week of, of this moon cycle within Libra. And I get the sense that the balancing forces are going to be really strong. Like I've been talking about them being strong, but they're really going to be um, neutralizing some imbalances some extremes this week and I really get a sense of that with the astrology that I'm picking up on aside from just bringing to close that Libra lunar cycle and so I recently did a video on the law of balance and how to utilize it in a way that will help you to eliminate challenges in your life help you to manifest desires and just exist within serenity and that video is actually doing really well. I'm, I was really excited to see how people are really enjoying that and I'm sure sharing it. So thank you. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, if you shared it, I really just, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was just sharing something that really resonated with me and that I've been connecting with and doing some studies on. And so one of the, another point that I've been discussing during that Libra solar season is there was a lot coming forth about making a decision, right? And taking our time on our the, the decisions that we have made or just in general, we always wanna really be discerning and also intuitive when we make decisions within our lives. And so I've been reflecting on this, you know, throughout the week and into the weekend. And one of the things that have come forth is that it's just this feeling around like, did I make the right decision? Am I making the right choices in my life? And that came forth as well with my own reflections of the way in which I made decisions at the, in the past, where, you know, even thinking about 10 years ago, in comparison to where I am now, there's just so many things where I I look back and I'm just like, oh, why did I do that? Or why did I say that? Or why did I go this way instead of that way? And, you know, I was in those moments of reflection, I was really doing my best not to beat myself up, not to judge myself. And at the same time of in the of being in these um places of reflection, I also had been revisiting studies on the lot of fortune and the lot of spirit. And it really got me into the place again of fate and free will, which is such a really tricky place to be. Mm, sorry, you can't be on the desk, sweetie. 
And that was a whole, that's been a whole nother level of, <sighs> of not trying to spiral into the dark, into the depths of the darkness. And, you know, I'll share with you all at some point, uh, my perspectives and studies around fate and free will. Nonetheless, considering just the choices that we make in our lives and, you know, getting caught up on, is this the right choice? And what if I make a mistake? What I'm learning is that one, of course, you no choices. As I'm thinking about saying this, I'm like, is do I believe this? But there's no such thing as like, uh, there are mistakes in life, but are there mistakes in life is where I'm going with this. And we are going to really have an experience in life in general, we can't get away with it of, you know, a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, making the quote unquote right decisions that are amazing. And then also making the quote unquote wrong decisions that create challenges and contrast and resistance. And it's all a learning process. You're going to have a mixed bag, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And when it comes to living life and experience life, experiencing life, it's not really fun or advised to live a life where, you know, and some may disagree with me on, on this, but living, a living the life of what we would consider to be a saint, like doing nothing wrong, renouncing everything, you know, doing away with material desires, sexual desires, and, you know, just essentially being very isolated and secluded from the world around us and what it means to be a human on earth. And on the other side of the extreme, you know, it's not really advised to be completely negative and, you know, um, doing things that are harmful and just completely swept away into just like the earthly pleasures. I, I think you pick up what I'm saying, right? There's like the extremes. We want to move away from the extremes. We want to find the way in the middle, right? The middle way is essentially what is important. And we want to, again, you know, not get caught up in perfectionism. And so, yes, we might make a mistake, but what is really essential, what the key is, is having the awareness of the mistakes, being able to see, be observant, and to be able to really refine our thoughts, refine our actions and our beliefs to essentially correct or move in a different way or balance out any extremes that are happening within our lives. And so I just wanna say to share that if anyone is still, maybe you haven't made a decision and you feel like a little bit caught up in what is the right thing. And I know there is also an experience, I've had this before and you know I'm sure I'll always come across this feeling or experience where it's like you feel like you don't really know if something's right, so to speak, but you really feel drawn to that. And there's no sure way to be like, okay, is this like, you know, the right thing to do? Should, is it really going to turn out right? And what I've been telling myself is that, and you know, these certain situations where it won't let go of you until you like, choose it or move towards it. Like there's something there and it may be amazing and work out or it might not. Right. But if you don't move towards it, then you're, you might have this life or this experience of regret. And in those moments, you know, it's best to just do it, to move towards it, because there's something there for you, whether it's a lesson or it's something that actually is truly going to work out for you. And either way, it's going to help you to expand. And so that's something I just wanted to share because I was getting caught up in my own head about, is this the right thing? Like, what if, you know, did I make a mistake in the past? And, you know, I wish that I knew what I knew now. And it's like, you know, it's all a learning process. The journey is what's essential, right? So I wanted to share that with you. So speaking of the journey, speaking of the energy of this week, the highlight is going to be, the highlight is the new moon in Scorpio. Also, we have Halloween this week, the day before the new moon. And I feel the biggest energy, the biggest influence this week is Mars squaring Pluto. 
Mars and Cancer squaring Pluto and Capricorn, that exact or not square, I'm sorry, opposition, that exact opposition happens at the end of the week. And I'm like, we have to go a whole week in anticipation. Like what? And I, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of feeling that now. And the Mars in opposition to Pluto, just in, in general, not considering the signs that they're in, it is literally the epitome of power dynamics, right? If Mars is, you know, independence, free will, you know, just that strong determination and desires and acting in the moment and just really raw and present and instinctual. Pluto is a really deep, raw power in the power and experiences that bring forth not only transformation, but a whole new entity. And Pluto, the energy, the experience of Pluto, let it be in, in transit, or what have you, really is the experience of the uncovering of really deep aspects of yourself or a situation, uncovering, you know, experiences or trauma or thought or inf thought or information that can be really scary, can be shadowy. And then also at the same time, you're getting these information or the ex experiences that will help you to um, help you with you know, things that are unseen um, in the sense of, I want to say like premonitions and things of that nature. And so what comes forth from Pluto though, tends to be experiences and energies that are either really, really big and blown out of, out of proportion or the complete opposite of just being like really, really small and insignificant. So you get this um, energy of extremes in reference to what Pluto can bring forth. And so when Mars and Pluto come together, it's just, it, it's a power dynamic. It is, you know, it, it's, it's raw passion and, and desire and, and, and things of that nature. And so Mars is in cancer and Mars Mm, isn't really the best experience in, in cancer as there's a lot of emotions. There is, you know, the focus on the self is not fully um, experienced because of that cancer archetype of being the caregiver and creating the space and environment focused on nourishment and nurture and just, yeah, taking care and, um, with Pluto and Capricorn, it is essentially, or with Capricorn energy, it is, it's again, it's another level of protection and of exclusion and discipline and, and structures and restrictions and just containment in a way, right? And with Capricorn, yes, the restriction and the containment is, can be looked at as very guarded and cold. And, but I feel at Capricorn's core, it's wanting things to, it is wanting to support growth and evolution just in a way that is contained and observed and done efficiently, right? And so the best way to get something done the way you want it is to, you know, if you're putting it in a, like a little box, right? Um, and it's keeping it safe so that it can do its thing within this particular container with these particular methods and rules, right? It, and so you kind of know what to expect and have a specific way in which things can thrive and evolve, right? And so I can see Pluto being a bit uncomfortable in that energy because Pluto you know, it's fine until it's not right. It's fine until it's an explosion and there's something revealed, like something is unlocked and uncovered. And then it's just like a whole thing. And so it's really interesting considering both Cancer and Capricorn have this strong um, desire to protect, to hold something safe, right? And to keep something in, in, the, in the reference of Cancer to really help things evolve and grow. And so with Mars there, it's like, that's the passion, is the protection, is the security. With Pluto and Capricorn, I think Pluto is more so they're helping to relieve any resistance and restrictions that are prohibiting 
um, growth and prohibiting expansion, right? And so it's time to make a change. It's time to transform. And so with these two in opposition, oh, from what I'm getting, just sharing this in discussion and breaking it down is that while they're in opposition, it seems like they're kind of working together in a sense of, of liberation, but it's like really challenging energies um, because it's like, who can overpower the other? And so with all of this said, this is happening just two days after the new moon in Scorpio. And I think it's really interesting that we have both the, we have the traditional ruler of Scorpio, that being Mars, and we have the modern ruler of Scorpio, which is Pluto. And they're both, you know, in opposition as the moon is dark in a very dark place of Scorpio. It just, the veil is really thin. There's just a lot going on there. And so I'm just like, got to stay grounded, got to stay clear. So with all of this said about the Scorpio moon, the dominant energy, the dominant Oracle message for this week is literally, see if I can get in here, moon. And there's a bit of a glare here. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So hopefully I can get the glare off of here so you can see it. There we go. So moon in Scorpio with power. And you have this lady laying down and gazing up at the sun and moon in union. Like you really can't make this up. And I love just like the structure here. It it reminds me of a temple structure of um, one of Hathor's temple Dendera. Uh, it, I don't know. It, that's just a personal connection with me. But it was funny because last weekend, this wasn't the Oracle received, but it was on the bottom of the deck. And I just happened to look at the bottom of the deck and I just, I, I stopped with it there and I connected with this energy and I, and I felt actually, this is what I was doing that morning when I woke up in bed and I was just sitting there contemplating and feeling all of these different emotions. Like I was very emotional last week. And so it was interesting to receive this. And this was the first card received. And I had a feeling that it was a dominant energy, but with with the oracles of the week, I use my pendulum to see, you know, to ask which one is dominant. And for sure it was, this one was dominant. And this, whenever I see, um, like the current astrology, like moon and Scorpio, um, in these oracles, it, it just really brings it, it, it affirms like whatever the message is. And it, it, it kind of strengthens like the, the power, literally the power of, this new moon that's happening. And I've talked about, I believe in the previous cosmic climate about with this sort Scorpio season, I really am feeling the guidance of the journey within and really taking time to, um, to really be present with your own energy, with your emotions that come up. Right. And when in that feeling of presence, like feeling the emotions and also letting them pass through, like doing our best not to hold on to the emotions as that is one of the, um, that's actually one of the challenges of moon being in Scorpio is that Scorpio is, it's a sign that likes to fixate it. It can obsess and that doesn't have to be in a bad way. Um, But it likes to like, it'll choose something and then it goes, deep with that something. Right. And so with emotions that, that tends to happen with Scorpio, the moon and Scorpio is that there's a, uh, um, you choose or you grab a hold of an emotion and you go really deep with it and you identify with it and it consumes you. And with Scorpio, it's not always the, the like happy uplifting emotions. It could tend to be those really darker emotions, especially, I think I shared, I did share the description of this Oracle and that was in the book. And they mentioned that moon and Scorpio has no problems like holding a grudge. So that's something else to, to keep in mind um, with this week. And so continuing on with the Oracles, and I'm I'm probably going to come back to this because I feel like I could say more. Um, The other messages here we have is enthusiasm with the sun in 
Sagittarius, a completely different energy. This is very optimistic and hopeful and expansive. And just, it's literally a person flying with, um, in the, in the sky, um, with the stars and with, you know, what appears to be goddesses, deities. And yeah, so there's something to be enthusiastic about. And maybe that's an emotion that we want to kind of attach to. And then the other one here is sun in Capricorn with achievement. And speaking of that Capricorn energy, the structure, the container, and yeah, just very stable energy coming forth. And so if you hadn't had a chance to read my interpretation of these um, cards here um, via the community tab, what I pointed out essentially was that um, I pointed out the Mars Pluto opposition and how there's a lot of intensity there, the po literally power dynamics coming forth and a way to really then this intensity in our favor, this power in our favor essentially is to, let me see what I even wrote. Cause now I'm like, wait, what did I write? How do we, cause I got a lot of um, interpretations from this card here. Uh, oh yeah. Channel the force of this connection into your passion project, something that is meaningful to you and just seeing enthusiasm and achievement here because I don't know. I feel bits and pieces of the enthusiasm and the achievement. Like I feel it internally, but the dominant energy around, especially here in the U S it is very like heavy. It's dense. It is a little bit scary and there's just a lot going on. So it's hard to really feel that. And also I'm under the weather. So I'm like, what, what's happening? I don't have the energy to do anything. Right. And so with this energy that's coming through, we want to take care to channel that into our passion projects, into something that we are enthusiastic about even. And just to kind of add on to that is that with Halloween happening this week and also, yeah, Halloween and the new moon, Halloween essentially is the marker for the third harvest of the season, right? If there are three harvests of, of autumn or of this time of year, uh, the third, it, we have the, the August 1st, which I tend to lean more towards the August 8th energy, just spiritually speaking, and really the um, astronomical moment of the halfway point between summer and autumn or the equinox essentially is around August 6th. So around that time between August 1st and August 8th, so to speak, is that first harvest. The second one is the is September equinox. And the third one is Halloween or Samhain. And with this harvest, I before I even picked up the Oracle cards, what I was getting for this harvest is that it's it's a bit mysterious. I don't know if I already shared this. I know I shared this on Instagram, but I don't know if I share this in the cosmic climate but it's a bit mysterious and it is not going to, it's not completely obvious to us. And in true Scorpio fashion, there's going to take a bit of digging to get to that harvest. And the digging essentially is the inner work to really make an intention to dig deep within yourself to be present with yourself, to take slow movements. And again, feeling those feelings, right? Because our feelings give us an idea of what is maybe in balance or what we're, you know, um, having some challenges with. And we can learn from how we feel about certain things to know what is not in alignment and maybe how we can go about fixing that, so to speak. And so by taking this time of really getting to know yourself, being comfortable with the shadow with um, your fears. Also, as I mentioned, with um, nightmares even. So paying attention to your dreams. The nightmares are a gift in the sense of they will give you an idea of what is directly in your space right now that is creating challenges, that is creating resistance. And so paying attention to your dreams and the emotions in your dreams any repeating symbols or dream themes, any of that will really help you to identify what is in resistance. And that experience, that devotion and passion, determination to 
become more intimate with yourself and, and ha- allowing the vulnerability to face your fears, so to speak, you know, and facing your fears can look like making that choice you're kind of scared to make, but also accepting the the possibilities of making a mistake or something like failing. Um, the act of doing that will be rewarded essentially with this heart, whatever this harvest is, what, there's a gift there. There's going to be a blessing or some sort of opportunity coming forth from this third harvest. And so that is, uh, that I feel that's where these two energies, as far as like achievement and enthusiasm are coming into play here to really, and you see in a sense, like when I see this card here, I'm, this just reminds me of myself as like, when I do like to do deep meditations, I like to lay on the floor and I am essentially connecting with the celestial energies are co- collect connecting with spirit, right? The divine, which can be in some cases, the sun and moon. So it really does um, have a strong um, influence on our personal power, right? The power to connect with the divine and to be able to be immersed in that energy is going to be important for this Scorpio season. So more on Mars opposition to Pluto, because that's kind of setting the tone or that is setting the tone for this week. And actually this Mars opposition with Pluto is going to be one of three. This is a really important um, connection or aspect for Mars's retrograde cycle between Cancer and Leo, because Mars is going to also um, oppose Pluto when it's in Leo. And so you really want to pay attention to what's coming up at this time for you. And with this week in particular, especially because the, the veil is thin, we want to take care to really cleanse our space to activate, uh, an, an energetic shield, a protective shield. So one of the ways you can do that is just visualizing like a white light around you or like a bubble, or you could literally like this here actually has, um, sage and black salt in it. So you can wear something that is, um, although sage is, tends to kind of bring energies out of hiding in my opinion, but the black soul, I'm like, come out and like, let's suck you up into this. And then I'm going to dump it out because you can actually open it. And so I can open it and replenish it, but you can wear crystals, you know, to protect your energy field and like quartz, obsidian, black tourmaline, stuff like that. Um, You know, whatever resonates, it could be rose quartz, whatever it is, but this is a really good time to, protect your person, like wear something on your person for protection or visualize, you know, an energy field around you that is um, keeping you safe, which is definitely talking about the protective energy of Capricorn and Cancer. So it's, it's all in there. And um, again, I mentioned um, channeling this intensity into something productive if possible, or it could literally be like, you know, going out in nature and screaming or whatever, <laughs> whatever way is, is good for you to um, channel this energy and to get it out and to avoid triggering situations if possible, if you're not grounded, right? I think it's, it's very powerful at this time, especially with the Scorpio energy, we do want to um, be able to face those really intense moments mm-hmm. and those emotions. Um, but we also want to take into account if we are in the emotional space to do it, if we feel safe to do it. So this week specifically, maybe you want to avoid those situations until we get on the other side of the Mars opposition to Pluto. So I see kind of like a buildup of the energy towards that Mars um, opposition to Pluto. And it could be essentially like Mercury's having some sort of um, role in that. And basically there is a uh, potential for information to leak out for communications to go awry as Mercury is currently in Scorpio. It will move into Sagittarius the day after the new moon, but on October 30th. So the day before Halloween, Mercury in Scorpio will be in opposition to Uranus retrograde 
in Taurus. And so this, you know, Uranus is like shock liberation. <laughs> um, it could be destabilizing, just creating instability. And so in reference to like communication and Mercury and Scorpio could really be like cutting deep to like things that aren't are underneath the surface. I feel like Scorpio is really good at penetrating through them and Mercury and Scorpio that's like the intuitive knowing and being able to like really see and like get an energetic read on what is happening that's not going um that's left unsaid and like really the feelings of the matter and so with mercury coming into opposition with uranus retrograde there is potential for information and just like something to just be leaked like maybe you know loose lips or someone that you're in connection with might leak some information or say something that's just like, mm, it's not right. <laughs> it's not sitting right. And um, yeah, so, and that could come out too, is just like, you might read something that might really make you feel triggered or it's just a leak of information, information or energy exchange that can create instability and create some sort of shock, maybe trauma. And so again, this is why it's important to, to really, <clears throat> yeah, have that protective shield. Um, and moving forward, so basically once Mercury moves into Sagittarius, which is on uh, November 2nd, this actually might be a better day to have a conversation, although we're still, that's the eve of Mars opposition to Pluto. So if you have to say something, right? Like say if you get a read on something earlier in the week and you're just like, oh, I can't let it go, right? Especially that Scorpio, moon and Scorpio, it's like, I can't hold on to it. I got to speak my truth. Maybe wait until November 2nd to really like open up the conversation. And, you know, as there's a bit more um, optimism and more positive energy behind the words and the energy exchange with Mercury and Sagittarius, and moving forward, the very next day on October 3rd, after Mars and uh, Pluto have their opposition, Venus will oppose Jupiter retrograde. So you have this opposing energy of the benefics, which could be really good. And with Gemini and Jupiter retrograde, it can be, um, or I'm sorry, with Gemini and Sagittarius, it can be just like the sharing of you know, an idea about something, maybe you do wait and have that conversation and you have it from a loving space now that you know ahead of time to ground yourself, to put up your energetic, energetic shield and not th take things personally, then you might come together with this person and, you know, be able to find a middle ground or just maybe some idea might come forth of it or it's just like, oh yeah, I was feeling that too. Or like, I didn't mean it that way. Um, it just seems like more optimistic and a shift of the energy. And, but also at the same time, one thing to keep in mind is with Jupiter and one of the experiences or qualities of Jupiter that I've, I've been really connecting with um, lately is that Jupiter can, you know, over promise and under deliver. And so that's something too, we want to just find ourselves in a place of balance. And, and so, yeah, just, I'm just saying that however that comes out, um, when it comes to communicating or sharing ideas or, or wanting to build something. And then we also have Mars entering Leo on November 3rd. So at the end of the week, and I'm feeling this, this um, orientation towards I will, my will, divine will. So this strong confidence within the self and really um, being true to who it is that you are putting that intensity and that energy into your creative endeavors and, you know, getting, through the imposter syndrome is going to be a big part of that Mars and Leo experience. Yeah, it's just the strong will creative expression. And Mars is moving a bit slower than usual. And so that I feel is actually good because we're going to maybe take our time when it comes to stepping into something that we're passionate about and moving towards that and the way in which we want to express and share whatever we're feeling um, creative energy towards. And so the boundless creativity, that like strong vitality is going to be like nice and like channel, nice and like, it won't be just like raw fire energy coming out from Mars and express through Leo. Um, 
Yeah. And I feel there's going to be some things that are going to um, need to be refined. Like we're possibly going to feel a bit of our insecurities regarding Mars and Leo, um, especially as we're in this, this period of Scorpio season and the Scorpio lunar cycle. And so um, as this Mars part of Leo or this, yeah, this Mars transit aspect in Leo is going to be um, significant to the retrograde cycle as it is moving through territory that it's going to retrograde in. And so there will, yeah, it's we're just going to be slow movements here. Yeah. So also I want to say as far as the third harvest, just coming back to that. So Halloween essentially is the marker for the uh, third harvest um, in the veil being thin seasonally. Uh, sorry, I feel like I have to sneeze, but it's not, it's just teasing me. Uh, the astronomical third harvest is November 6th. And so whatever, T dates are dates, right? What I'm really getting a feel on is that as far as the manifestation or the reveal of what is going to be acquired um, from this third harvest, I have a feeling that that's going to come through with this fourth and final supermoon in Taurus, which is going to be around the, the full moon in Taurus is November 15th, right? That's the fourth supermoon. And I have, oh, that's the day that uh, Saturn stations direct. Interesting. Yeah, so there's going to be, it's tied into that, that energy. And the moon is exalted in Taurus. So there's an overabundance of, you know, resources. And, you know, I'm getting in my, in my mind, the cornucopia basket. I'm really feeling that. And so, yeah, we'll see. So it is a journey. And what's most important is the journey itself. I definitely have been getting the messages that they're going to be gems and, you know, just things along the way. It's almost like a little treasure hunt, which is really fitting because I just finished watching all the Indiana Jones movies, except the very last one, the newest one. I started watching it and I got halfway through and had to go to bed and I haven't started watching it again because I'm like, and I just moved on to Star Wars. So, um, but yeah, so I definitely feel this like treasure hunt and just, it's exciting, have fun and explore that, that, um, Scorpio and Sag energy coming together. And we already saw that leading into the Capricorn energy of the achievement. So maybe now seeing those cards with the sun in Sagittarius, maybe there's going to be a reveal there too, that gets us really excited. And then we will bring it fully into culmination um, uh, around the sun and uh, around Capricorn season being that the sun, yeah, it was the sun in Capricorn. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how everything unfolds for all of us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your wonderful comments. And I've got a lot of subscribers recently, I think due to the law of balance video. So thank you for those of you watching who have just newly subscribed. And I plan on sharing more videos like the law of balance, because I have a lot of different, um, just perspectives and experiences with those kind of teachings, esoteric teachings, especially when it comes to the ancient Egyptian um, culture and practices. And there's actually a playlist I have already um, called Hathor Teachings. And so maybe I will link that um, below, but I definitely have several, you know, just classes or uh, videos on things of that nature. So anyways, with all that to say, thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you in the next video. I hope to see you live for my dream chat over at Journey Through the Interverse uh, YouTube channel. And if I don't talk to you um, before the next video, happy Halloween, happy new moon. And I look forward to the next one. Take care.